In my previous videos, I've shown you how to generate um, offline programs with Machina. And offline programs meaning to generate them in a separate software and to compile that program into the native, into the robot's native language, and then be able to load it manually into the robot and execute it in cycles. Uh, however, one of the most interesting things in Machina is the fact that you can use it to drive the robot in real time by streaming actions and instructions constantly to the robot and perhaps sending them or changing them according to the state of the robot or the state of the environment. Um, so in order to do that, I'm going to show you how to, I'm going to show you several ways of doing that. Uh, but unfortunately, in order to do that, we need to go outside some of our um, usual visual programming languages because environments, because those environments work in a very linear way and they don't have a running execution loop that is constantly active and listening and doing things. So in order to do that, we need to move on into a different environment where we have code that is constantly running, executing, and therefore we can make decisions in real time. So that's what I'm going to teach you how to do now um, in, this, in, this, in this video. In order to do online programming or online control of robots, what we're going to use is we're going to use the main core library of Machina, which is written in .NET, is written in C Sharp. Uh, and in order to do that, in order to write it and use it, uh, we will be needing to install tools, some .NET framework, like for example, Visual Studio. So um, you can go to the main repository of uh, the Machina tools and go to the main Machina uh, project where there's a lot of documentation on how to use it, how to install it, etc. Um, unfortunately, I spend most of my time developing the code rather than maintaining documentation. So maybe some of the documentation that you will see on the website is pretty outdated. So very often it's probably just much better to go into the actual code and read the comments inside of the code to know what's going on and how to use things rather than just relying on perhaps outdated, um, outdated uh, documentation. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into the main project here. And you're welcome to fork the project. Everything is open source. So you're welcome to fork the project, to clone it, to contribute to it if you want. Uh, but at the basic level, uh, what you need to know is that uh, the project, um, should I go over this after? Um, well, we can, we can talk about this right now. So at, let's, at, at, the, at the main page, you can see a very simple example on how to use Machina in a very simple way. And there are links to documentation that can be helpful for you. So for example, there's a walkthrough page that discusses how to install, um, how to install Robot Studio, how to use a, an interactive REPL to drive it, um, how to create a simple console app, and pretty much many of the things that I'm going to be explaining in this in this very same video. Um, there's also um, there's also a main reference link where you can see. <coughs> A, broke, a breakdown of the API of Machina and the main actions that you can use and what the parameters you can, that you can feed it. Uh, as you can see, as of this writing, as of this video, Machina is in version 0 0.6 and this reference is 0 0.1, so it's very outdated. Uh, I'm sorry for that, <laughs> I do my best, but uh, yeah, it's probably much, just much better to sometimes just go perhaps to, for example, here um, in the main repository, just go to the robot C -sharp file. And here you can see the main API, the public API with all the actions. So for example, here you can create a new instance of the robot with a name and a, and a brand. You can set the control mode of how this will operate. Um, you can set the cycle mode, where if it will be once or loop. There are like many different things that you can. So the code is fairly well commented. So sometimes this is going to be just much more helpful. Anyway, um, I'm going to I'm going to be explaining many of those things right now in this video. So you can probably leave that for later. If you go to Machina and you go to the main distribution folder, you will see that here you will see a list of the zip files with the packages 
that contain the core library that you can then import into any framework that uses C Sharp. Like, for example, we're going to do right now in Visual Studio, but you could create your own Grasshopper or Dynamo components with these DLLs, or you could import them in Unity or any other uh, framework that accepts .NET. So I can download the zip file. I'm going to download it in my desktop, for example. And then <clears throat> if I go to my desktop now and I extract this thing, you will see that it comes with two files. It comes with a DLL and it comes with an XML. These are the two main core libraries that you will need to use uh, and that you will need to import any into any other. You will also need to, um, in order if you're going to be working with ADB robots, you will also need to throw in that same folder along with these DLLs, the Robot Studio, the Robot Studio DLLs. <clears throat> Those should be able to come with um, with your Robot Studio installation. Um, although I believe that they're probably somewhere here in the project. Uh, I should probably, they should probably not be in the project, but I, I think if you go to Machina and you go to assemblies, here you can find the three DLLs that are dependencies of the project if you're going to be using ABB robots. So it's recommendable that you download these three files as well. Um, I'm just going to do it right now. So I'm just going to download them all. <clears throat> okay, I'm just going to download this one here as well. Um, I should actually just pack this into the zip file. I will probably do at some point. So, yeah. Um, yep, and that's it. So now in my folder, I have the main Machina DLL, which is the core library. I have the XML file, which is the comments. Uh, for and uh, for the library, and then I have the three Robot Studio dependencies that Machina depends on. I'm just going to create a folder here, which is going to be Machina Assemblies, and I'm just going to put all of this here. And then <clears throat> I just have the five files that I need in order to be to build any project on with Machina, which we're going to do in just a second. The next thing we what we're going to do is we're going to install Visual Studio. Uh, so if you are, you should be able to Google Visual Studio and go to the main, um, to the main website. Um, and you can download for Windows. I personally use the community version, the 2015 for different reasons. But I think you should be fine if you download the, com the 2017 community version. So just go ahead, download the latest version, latest community version of Visual Studio and uh, install it in your system. Um, if you don't really know what's going on, just go with all the defaults that the installation gives you. And once you're done um, and you may have to sign up for you may have to sign up for a Microsoft account. I'm, I, I don't remember how it was. Once you're done, you, you may, and you open it, you may, it may look something like this. Um, Visual Studio is a development environment for many different languages, but mostly for Windows-based apps, um, which are, can be written in F Sharp, in C++, but Windows is also fairly well known for uh, C Sharp apps. So that's what we're going to be building now in this tutorial. So. Uh, in order to create a new app, I'm just going to create a very simple console app. A console app is an app that when you run it, it creates, it opens a terminal, it does its thing, and when it finishes, it just closes the terminal. It doesn't have a, it doesn't have an UI, it doesn't have buttons, it's basically like a, yeah, like a script of sorts. <clears throat> so in order to do that, we're going to go to new project. Um, and in new project, we're going to choose a console application. We're going to put it somewhere, so I'm going to put it on my desktop. And I'm just going to name it uh, Online Programming Sample, for example. I don't know. And as I do that, um, Visual Studio is going to create a template of a program that can run a console. And if you go here to Online Programming, 
you can see that now there is a solution. This is the main project file to, we can call. And then <clears throat> there are a lot of different folders with configuration, properties of the, um, of the, um, of the project, where the binaries are compiled, etc. But the main code that we're going to be writing is in the program.cs file, which stands for C sharp. So which is this one? You can see it here in the Solution Explorer. We have the properties of this project. We have the references. These are the dependencies or AKA the, the libraries that this project needs in order to work. And this here is the main file with the main program. As you can see, the main program comes with a class called program and a static method that takes arguments. So this will be an array of strings, which are the parameters that you would write in your console application, as in like, uh, marking a program and then maybe some numbers or some actions, whatever. Um, if I just right now out of the blue, I just execute this program. What I can see is that everything gets compiled in the background and then this terminal window opens, but because I have no code, the program finishes immediately. Um, and I see, I get to see nothing. So <clears throat> let me just write a very simple program that prompts me to enter a key to finish the program. I'm going to go here to the main program. I'm going to zoom in with the wheel as I press control to zoom the program in. And then here, I'm just gonna type console.write line so that I can dump a message into the console. So for example, press a key to exit this program. And then I'm going to read a key from the console. Uh, what this does is you can read user input, so you can take uh, keys from the from the user if I were to store them in a variable. Take for example input key, right? And but it, what's also interesting about this function is that it pauses the execution of the console application and it waits for the user to press any key whatsoever, which is a very effective way of just pausing the con the console application before doing anything. So in order to do that, I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to run this program. And what you're going to see is that I get a console application here that tells me to exit this program. And then if I press any key, then the console, the program finishes and we're done. So that's the simplest version of a console application that you can write in C Sharp with Visual Studio. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up this console application to be able to run Machina and to run Machina commands, okay? In order to do that, we're gonna do several things. The first thing we're going to do is we're gonna change the .NET framework. So the version somehow like, um, <clears throat> we're going to change the .NET framework, which is kind of the version of C Sharp that this, um, that this is going to run on. And by default, so if you go right click here in properties, um, and if you double click here in properties, and you see the target framework, right? Right now, by default, it's 4.5. Machina is written in 4.6, so we need to update this so that we can use Machina in this application, okay? The next thing we need to do is um, I'm probably, I, I want to be able to load the main Machina assembly into this, this, this app. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to import it by saying I'm using Machina in this project. However, if I do this, I get an error because Machina is not found on this project, which means that I do have the files, but I have not linked the files, the Machina DLLs, into this um, into this project. So I'm going to do two things. First, I'm going to physically move these assemblies to inside of the project. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to just paste in a folder inside of the project the assemblies that I'm using, the Machina DLL and its Robot Studio dependencies. And then the next thing I'm going to do is here, I'm going to go to references and then I'm going to add a reference to the Machina library that I'm going to be using. So I'm going to be, I'm going to hit browse, 
then I go to desktop and I go to where my program is. I go to my project and then in the folder assemblies, you can see that I can choose the LLs. So I'm going to choose Machina and I'm going to import this reference into my project, which means that as you could see now, um, now Visual Studio recognizes Machina as a library that it can load. And because Machina has the dependencies of Robot Studio, which are in the same folder, Mac Visual Studio can find them and everything works well. So if I execute this program now, everything works because all dependencies are, are fine. So we are ready now to write Machina uh, instructions in this, in this, in this, in this environment. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to mimic uh, what we did for offline programming in previous videos in visual programming languages. Therefore, what we're going to do is we're going to create this virtual program that we're going to compile to the robots native language. And then we're going to load it manually into the robot studio simulation to see if it's working. Um, so now that we and we're going to meet, we're going to do this very simple program like we did before, where we're going to have the robot move in a straight line from one side of one quadrant of the three-dimensional space to the other. So if just quick reminder, uh, the coordinate system of the robot is if we go to the here to the walkthrough page um, and uh, and we scroll down, we can see a diagram of the coordinate system of the robot. And <coughs> if you remember, the coordinate system for ABB robots in this case is centered at the base of the robot and X direction is this way, this is the Y direction, and this is the Z direction. So we will want to make a program, a simple program where the robot moves from this side in a straight line to this other side. So that's what I'm going to do right now. So if I go back here to Visual Studio, what I can do is now that Machina is loaded and available in my project, now I have access to a lot of Machina classes that help me through this process. So for example, I can create a new instance of a virtual robot by just using the robot class in Machina. I'm, go I'm going to declare a variable of the type robot that I'm going to call arm. And I'm going to create a new robot with a factory static constructor. Um, and if I scroll down with the arrow keys, you can see that it has two overloads. So it needs to it needs this function needs a name for the robot so online test for example and it also needs a second parameter which is the type of robot that we're going to be using i can use the enumerator enumerator, enumerator that comes with machina and it tells me <clears throat> for example that i have five options abb human kuka universal robots and zmorph which is just a 3d printer or so i could type here abb and that would work or I could simply instead just use a string to type the name of the brand of the robot and then the machina figure out if that is available in the system or not. So once we have created this virtual robot as a variable, then we are ready to start telling that robot to perform actions in a sequence. So for example, the first thing that I could do is I could just like with <clears throat> just like with the visual programming language, if I type arm dot, then I get access to a drop down of all the different actions and all the different things that I can tell the robot to do, like set extrusion rates, I can get information from it, I can send a message, I can move, I can set the position, I can rotate it, etc. So first things first, uh, I can, for example, move it. And remember that Machina always works either in relative or in absolute coordinates. So, uh, <clears throat> in, so because I want to move to a particular location in this, I'm going to use absolute coordinates. So move, that's going to be move to. And then here I will, I will set the, I have a, in the dropdown, I can either choose a point to move to, or I can just write the X, Y, Z coordinates because I want it to be on the left hand side of the robot. I'm going to use, for example, X is going to be 400, Y is going to be minus 400, it's negative because it's on the left side, and Z is going to be, for example, 200. I can now 
use, for example, a relative motion instead to tell the robot to move 800 millimeters in the y direction and do not move at all in the x or the or the z direction. So this is going to be drawing a straight line, right? And once I have finished drawing this straight line, I probably want to, as I said in previous videos, it's probably good practice to move the robot back to a home position. I can probably say, move back to a home position by setting the values of the six axes of the robots with their angles in degrees. So I can do that by saying, for example, for ABB robots, a home position is 0, 0, 0, 0, 90, 0. So this is go back home. Good. So that's pretty much it. With this program, I've taken this virtual robot and I've told it three instructions to follow. And by the end of this, the robot should be back in home position. But one of the interesting things in Machina is that if you're working offline, which is how Machina works by default, um, Machina stores all the steps and all the sequence of actions that a, a virtual robot has performed and then <coughs> can compile a program in native code based on that sequence of actions that we just generated. So I can now compile the program by just saying arm.export and the export function will take all those actions that the robot has used and we will flush them into a file in the native robots programming language, which in this case for ABB robots is Rapid. So here I'm going to just type the name of the file and then um, I'm just going to say, for example, C dot um, test file, test program, for example, test program dot PRG. And I'm using the at sign here so that I can just write all these characters without having to escape them. Um, and as you can see from the tooltips, there are two more options that I can add to the compilation. Whether if I want targets to be inline or so I can say true here, and whether if I want human comments to be added to the lines to know what's going on at each step of the, of the program. If I <coughs> run this code, everything, and I execute it now, everything runs okay. So I can, I can press a key to start the program, but I see that there was some kind of message, but the console closed really fast. So let me just see first if, um, the program was correctly compiled, so I'm going to double click on test program, which is the file that I just exported, and I'm going to use rapid as the highlighting here. And I can see that there's something wrong because only one of the actions got, um, got compiled, the one where I set the rotations of the joints to 0, 0, 90, 0. Um, this is a small problem that Machina has right now which is it's a small limitation which is which is that when you create a virtual robot because it's not attached to a physical robot at all there's basically the machina doesn't know where that robot is or what the orientation of the robot is or what the joints are so it cannot start moving around unless you initialize the position and the orientation with the first action that you issue to the robot so with moving to, we are setting the position of the robot, but we're not setting the orientation of the TCP, which is a problem. So, so we don't know. And, and actually, that would be a, a that would be that message we could read in the console. If before closing the console, I add another message here, press a key to end the program. You could see that if I run the program now. Sorry, you're currently missing TCP orientation to work with, blah, blah, blah. So Machina gives me an error because it says I cannot work with this move action before you tell me some the orientation of the TCP, the two subject point, which means that probably the first action that I need to issue, the first action that I need to tell the robot to do is to set a position and an orientation in space so that no matter what the robot was, it just, it's just going to get those values to start with. I can do that by, instead of using the move to action, I can use the transform 
two action where this action is going to set both the position of the robot it's going to tell the robot to go somewhere with a particular orientation so you're basically giving it all the information that it needs in visual programming languages you would use a plane to define location and orientation in space here we have to do it manually so you can see that if i can do it with a point object and an orientation object or i can use it i can do it with all the individual values so because it's a bit clearer i'm just gonna use points and orientation so i'm going to create a new point which is going to have the coordinates that i want the robot to go to and i'm going to define now a new orientation that i want the TCP to be on. Orientation can be defined in many different ways in Machina, but probably one of the simplest ways is to define the X and the Y vector, the direction of the X and the Y vector that are forming the coordinate system of the TCP, the tools and the form. So as you can say, as you can see in world coordinates, the X vector and the Y vector are here. But in world coordinates, the X vector of the TCP is inverted, so it's pointing inwards, is negative, and the Y vector is the same as the global one. So we can use that information here, where in order to input the orientation, I can use the X, I can input the new vector, X vector, and the Y vector of that orientation. So <clears throat> I'm going to create a new vector here, which is going to be that x vector but in in the negative sign so that's going to be the x coordinate of the vector is going to be minus one zero zero and then i'm going to create i'm going to the orientation of the y vector and the y vector is the, the exactly the same one as in in work coordinates so it's a vector whose direction is zero one zero because it's a y vector it only has the component of component of one in the Y direction. So if I do this, now I have set all the values, the position and the orientation of the TCP. So if I run this program now, I should be able to get a program with no errors and no messages. And if I go back to the exported program, you can see that now I have three actions, transform, and I have the relative motion and I have the joint rotations. <clears throat> Awesome. So <clears throat> now that we were able to generate the PRG program, uh, let's load it in Robot Studio and see if it works. I have here an instance of Robot Studio where I created a, an IRB ADB robot. Uh, if you don't know how to do this, you can check my previous videos. And here um, in the Rapid tab, I'm going to extend the stuff and I'm going to right click here to load the program that I just created. I'm going to override what it was, what the program that was there before. I'm going to go to my main C drive and I'm going to choose the PRG format and I'm going to load this test program. As I load my test program and I hit run, then I can see that the robot starts going to that location in space. So it starts going to 400, minus 400 and 200, which was, was the first point that I set in the program. But it's going very, very slow. Uh, for the same reasons that I discussed in previous videos, by default, the speed of the robot is 20 millimeters per second. So I probably want to speed those things up a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to go back to my program and I'm going to say, well, before doing anything, I'm going to set some initial parameters. Which are is going to be, I'm going to set the speed at which I want the robot to move. So that's going to be, for example, 150 millimeters per second. And I'm going to set the precision that I want the robot to move, like five millimeters radius. Um, <clears throat> if I now, X, I now compile my program this way, you can see in here, you can say that in the exported program, there are, there's annotations here that tell me that the speed and the precision were set higher before we started. So if I load, if I reload that program in Robot Studio, I'm going to reload the program, the new updated program. I choose PRG. I choose, I load it here. 
and I run this program, you can see that the program is now much faster. So it's going to this point, and now it's drawing the straight line. And probably after the straight line, you can see that I'm very close to the limbs of the joint here. So maybe it would be interesting to push this line a bit farther down. But after that, the robot is going back to 0, 0, 0, 90, and 0. Is that correct? It is correct, exactly. And because the, my run mode is set to single cycle, it only executes the program once. So great, we were able to generate an offline program uh, with these parameters. Just as a quick, um, just as a quick showcase of other things that you can do with Machina, we're going to enhance this program a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a small program where the robot starts from home, then it's going to move somewhere in the positive quadrant here. It's going to rotate the flange, it's going to rotate the TCP to face the user, and then it's going to draw, it's going to trace a square, a vertical square in space, and then go back home. Um, it's a very simple program, but it's just a showcase of different things that you can do. So um, it's going to be super fast to write. Um, for example, <coughs> things that we can do is uh, we're going to keep the same robot, we're going to set, keep the same um, initial information, and then here, uh, just because the using new classes is a bit uh, hard to read, I'm going to write the exact same instruction, but I'm just going to use directly the values of the location and the orientation that I want to use. So I'm just going to transform to, and if you if you double, if you scroll down, you can see that I can just input right away the x y z coordinates, the three components of the x vector, and the three components of the y vector that define the orientation of the TCP. So that's going to be like I had before, 400. Uh, now I'm going to go to the positive quadrant, so 400, 400, and 200. And then minus 1, 0, 0, and then the y component is 0, 1, 0. Sounds good. Uh, <coughs> so I'm going to kill this a little bit, set some initial parameters. Then I'm going to go to the starting point. And then after I transform there, I'm just going to wait a little bit, just for the sake of having the robot. Um, imagine we were drawing or we were welding something. I'm just going to wait there for a second. So once the robot is actually now, before we do that, we're going to rotate and make the robot look face the user that is in the front. Uh, in order to do that, um, because I want to rotate over the Y axis, I can probably just use a relative motion and say whatever, as you move to that point, whatever you are, just rotate 90 degrees around the y-axis. So I'm going to say rotate, and I'm going to use the relative action. And uh, I can use a rotation orientation. I can use a vector and the angle. Or I can just use the x, y, z components of the vector, the rotation vector, and the angle. The rotation vector, because I want to rotate <laughs> and make the flange face outside, I'm going to rotate around the y-axis, the global y-axis. And you can see that if I use the right-hand rule, because I want to rotate like this, I need to rotate minus 90 degrees. So I'm going to go back here and say I'm going to rotate around the y-axis, so 0, 1, 0, and I'm going to rotate minus 90 degrees. And I'm going to wait. So once we have that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace a vertical rectangle. In order to do that, <clears throat> I can just say, well, whatever the robot is, I just want to move and the control amount to the right, up, to the left, and down. right? So I can define a variable, for example, double the size of the rectangle. And it's going to be, I don't know, 100 millimeters maybe a bit less, 15 millimeters. Um, and then once I have defined this, I can say, I'm going to move relative to where I am. I'm just going to move 50 units in the positive y direction. So that's going to be, now I'm going to move up. So I'm going to move the arm, a relative motion in the x direction. So red size. Now I want to move left. So left is going to be in the y direction, negative in the y direction. So 
that's zero minus rec size. Ah, I'm kind of clumsy today. And um, and then I'm going to go back down. So that's going to be zero, zero, and minus this value that I just defined. Okay, so that is tracing the vertical rectangle. And just also for the sake of, I probably want to wait a bit before going back home. Okay. Also, something that might be interesting is tracing this rectangle more precisely, but also mm, mm, slower, making it slower. So I can say before I trace the rectangle, I can set the speed to a lower value, 50, and I can set precision to something a bit higher, like one millimeter, right? And then once I'm done, I probably gonna go back home and I probably gonna go back home much faster. So I'm going to set the speed again to a higher value, like 300. And then I'm going to set the axis to the value of home position, which again is 000, 0, 0 90, 0 for 80 billions. <clears throat> Let's see if this works. I'm going to run the program. I'm going to execute it. And I think everything worked well. My test program has been compiled. And if I look here, in the file, I can see that now I have like a bunch of different actions um, and I have the comments that tell me what is happening at each point. So the first action here is the transformation where I set everything. This, and you can see that the orientation was X negative and Y positive. That's interesting. And then here is where I rotate minus 90 degrees around this vector, which is the positive Y vector. So that's going to be this action here. Now I'm waiting, now I'm setting speed and precision, and now I'm tracing the rectangle with the four actions, waiting, and then I'm going back to 0, 0, 0, 90, and 0. Sounds good. So let's see if this works. I'm going to load this program, right click, load program, override, I'm gonna set PRG, I'm gonna load this program, and I'm going to execute it, see if it works. I run it and then it's going to the positive quadrant and it should now rotate to face the user. Is that correct? It rotates to face the user. It had to, it waited for one second. Now right up. Now it's going left and it's going down and it's probably going to wait one second and now it's going back home. Great. So we were able to, with this method, we were able to generate very simple programs in an offline way and compile them to a text file the same way that we were doing with visual programming languages. And as you can see, it's the way to do this is with all the APIs that come within the robot object and that the way to do it is very verbose and is very sequential. So you just have to write one after the other, the actions that you want the robot to execute and the robot will just do them as soon as it can. Uh, very simple, very straightforward. So in the next video, we will see how to just tweak a couple of things in this very exact same program so that instead of just compiling to a text file and then loading it on the robot somehow, then we're going to make establish a live connection between Visual Studio and the robot and stream these actions one after the other live in real time to the robot. Okay, um, stay tuned for that.